Okay, I'm going to try reading it myself for you, but super quickly, here is slide 15 where it starts with just a little introduction to what this section is going to be about. So I just click down to parts of the brain involved in memory. Um, so we're looking at a couple of different people. We're looking at the equipotentiality hypothesis and then some brain areas that are going to be involved. So the amygdala, the hippocampus, patient HM. And we've also got the cerebellum. We've got the prefrontal cortex. This is just a getting yourself oriented to what's going to be coming up. Um, neurotransmitters, so some different specific neurotransmitters, and then arousal theory. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if I can do this. So learning objectives, explain the brain functions involved in memory, recognize the roles of the hippocampus, amygdala, and cerebellum. So are memories stored in just one part of the brain, or are they stored in many different parts of the brain? So Carl Lashley began exploring this problem about 100 years ago by making lesions, so that's like a little cut, in the brain of animals such as rats and monkeys. He was searching for evidence of a engram, so that's a group of neurons that serve as the quote-unquote physical representation of memory. First, Lashley, in 1950, trained rats to find their way through a maze. Then he used the tools available at the time, so in this case it was a soldering iron, to create lesions in the rat's brains, specifically in the cerebral cortex. A lesion is, again, like a little, a little cut, so he's cutting the rat's brains. Not very nice stuff. He did this because he was trying to erase the engram, or the original memory, trace that the, the rats had of the maze. So is this little brain damage going to cause them to forget what they learned? Lashley did not find evidence of the engram, and the rats were still able to find their way through the maze, regardless of the size or location of the lesion. So based on his creation of lesions in the animal's reaction, he formulated the equipotentiality hypothesis. So this hypothesis states that if one part, one area of the brain involved in memory is damaged, another part of the same area can take over that memory function. Although Lashley's early work did not confirm the existence of the engram, modern psychologists are making progress locating it. So for example, Eric Kandel has spent decades studying the synapse and its role in the flow of information through neural circuits needed to store memories. So many scientists believe that the entire brain, all of it, is involved with memory. However, since Lashley's research, other scientists have been able to look more closely at the brain and memory. They have argued that memory is located in specific parts of the brain, and specific neurons can be recognized for their involvement in forming memories. The main parts of the brain involved are the amygdala, the hippocampus, the cerebellum, and the prefrontal cortex. And I'm just going to click back to the 